Hello everyone, welcome to MJ Hobby Corner. MJ here and uh, welcome to my channel. Welcome new subscribers. I hope you enjoy your stay. Well, uh, today is Saturday and Julie and I are preparing our armies for Grimdark, the game that you guys voted on. And uh, I had to do a lot of restoration this morning of models for the army that I want to play. And I put some picks over in the community tab. So when you get a chance, check those out. So I had to do a lot of work on that this morning. So I didn't really get a chance to do uh, any other projects. But today, in today's video, what I want to do is talk a little bit about this uh, pipe, uh, not pipe, but the fuzzy stick technique or pipe cleaner technique. Uh, basically using uh, these fuzzy sticks to make creatures, tree monsters and like earthy looking creatures for uh, forces of nature army or even a fey army, you know, an army with a very strong fey theme associated with it. So uh, I'm going to show a couple of the creatures that I made already. And the lovely thing about this build is that of these builds is that they don't take a lot of time for one thing it, it probably takes longer to paint them than it does to actually make them now i already have one video on this you can go check that out uh the first video where i kind of introduced this technique this is not my technique i want to make sure i say that this is uh other builders have used this technique it's not new um i got my inspiration from encounter terrain it is a, a channel and this person has a lot of cool builds on the channel and um, he introduced this kind of pipe cleaner technique uh, for making trees and it makes lovely trees so if you want to use it just for that it's great I I'm taking it a step further and actually looking into building quite a few other things so let's look at these tree monsters and then I'll have a very brief uh, how I did the uh, rhino one here because there is like a rhino looking one and then we'll move on okay so let's take a look at these okay so we have quite a few figures here uh, we're gonna ignore these for now these are all clay some bug like humanoids that I've made uh, but we're gonna ignore those for now uh, let's look at this uh, these pipe cleaner tree people so this is the archer one and I've made some changes and I'm gonna be painting and finishing up on the paint uh, this one is headless there's only a, a little uh, hint here of what might be a head but this is a giant archer figure yeah I'm a glutton for punishment Julie will be using these figures primarily in her forces of nature armies now I have to finish the uh, base here I haven't finished the base but this is the archer figure so not bad this is a a kind of a continuation of the last video and showing some of the more the figures approaching completion but look at all the texturing and stuff technique allows uh, you know with the pipe cleaners so this is all just wrapping the pipe cleaners around and twisting them and you know it's very very interesting technique now this is the other one that was in the first video and this one um, was like a brilliant green because uh, they were like fluorescent pipe cleaners. Well, I've painted some stuff up. I've added some flocking powder here. Um, added the uh, giant cocoon, which was also made from pipe cleaners. Uh, added a few bits from Aegis Sigmar tree creatures, right? Like the little owl. Let me see if I, I don't want it to. Uh, I'll try to zoom in a little bit. There we go. So I have to paint the owl and the skeleton back there. Okay, so I added a few plastic bits to this and also sculpted some like uh, terrace fungi right back there just to give it a little more interest. There are some terrace fungi and you know, pretty cool, pretty cool. I mean, this makes a very interesting, very different tree monster. Now let's compare it to Age of Sigmar. There's the Age of Sigmar creature, okay? 
So this could be like a, one of the ancient tree herders and then these are like the tree monsters themselves. I am going to be making a wasp nest, like a giant wasp nest that this thing could probably hurl through the air. <laughs> Yeah, I am a glutton for punishment. Julie's going to have a blast uh, smashing me with these. So these are primarily for Julie's armies. These are not for my armies. All right. So, uh, okay. So those are the humanoid uh, monster creatures. But check this one out. Now, I wanted to experiment with more animal forms, right? And so I made this giant rhino-like creature that then has a removable howda. This howda can come off and I have to paint it and I have to finish the base. Okay. But you can see the terrace fungi. You can see numerous branchings like coming out, some branch bits. Uh, these are from dollar store plants. Okay. So it's a very inexpensive build and it's very odd, very strange. I like it. For a dark fey army or like a wood elf army, it's really cool, I think. Uh, here are some mushrooms. I sculpted those and then added it. Look at all that texturing and all that stuff. Um, again, this how it is removable. And then I can use the creature alone if I want to. Very, very odd build. Um, Julie loved that one, by the way. So, I, yeah, she's probably going to put like a magic user on there. And so I put this fairy with a scroll. It's an old mage knight figure that I kind of repurposed so yeah a fairy magic user would go very well there you know uh, here's a fairy from reaper okay so julie is thinking about adding like a, a fae kind of a fae theme to the her her like forces of nature army so putting the rhino aside for a bit let's now look at this one this is one of my favorite ones and I gave it a very, like, I wanted a very, like, skinny, almost corpse-like look, right? Which I think it definitely has. And so these, uh, you know, I'm going to be painting this in earthy tones and adding all the decoration that you saw before. And I will be adding a tree man rider to this because this is going to be a cavalry figure. This is another tree man figure and these are smaller. So now I'm experimenting with smaller figures. But this is going to be like a hero figure. But as I was making this, I then realized this really does look like a corpse. It looks like a desiccated or mummified animal. And then the idea came that, you know, I could do something like this uh, with a desert animal, say a camel, make it really, des de you know, like corpse looking and paint it up to look like a desiccated corpse and have it in a Tomb Kings-like army, right? Where the skeletons and these kind of mummified creatures would be the thing. So this has a lot of uses, this technique. And again, this is all by using pipe cleaners. This one, the reason why I have the wire armature is that to make this, I, I made one of my wire armatures as if I was sculpting an animal. And then I wrapped my pipe cleaners around that wire and, you know, melted it with the flame. And then this is the result. So this, this and the rhino require armatures in order to make. They weren't like pure pipe cleaners. Okay. So the wire gives it the shape and then gives it that real desiccated look because the pipe cleaners kind of melt in there. And it's just really, really cool. I... I'm really liking this technique. So this is going to be an earthy creature. It's not going to be a corpse. But in the future, that's something I might do for my undead armies. All right. So here, I'm just going to show how that rhino that I just showed you, how this rhino in the background started. So let's talk just a little bit about that. Let's mention some of the tools. Uh, small pliers, definitely very useful for bending wire and all that. Also, for if you're going to use tinfoil armature, uh, definitely for um, taking the areas of tinfoil armature that you want to make a little bit thinner, right? Like here, to give it a little more definition. Pliers are very useful. My cutters, 
of course pipe cleaners plenty of them um, a few of these cocktail sticks and I'll show you in a minute why burner that's that's the key to everything and then some tin foil. Now we'll also need some kind of like varnish or a Mod Podge or a Mod Podge wannabe from the dollar store, whatever. I have one that actually is working very well. So all of these figures have a layer or two of that Mod Podge, okay? And it really helps to harden the figure and it helps when painting the figure as well. So those are the tools and the materials. So I already have a head start. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step video, okay? I'm still exploring this technique, but basically I made an armature out of tinfoil. There's no wire in there. It's just tinfoil. Shaped it roughly, okay, like the animal that I want. Could be anything. Um, and then I put these toothpicks through, and this is what's going to serve to hold the pipe cleaners for now. Now, I, you could also use hot glue if you prefer. You know, I, at first I thought about using hot glue and then just gluing the limbs uh, because when you're going over it with the flame, you're not going to really spend a lot of time. So even if the hot glue does kind of melt a little bit, it, it, I don't think it'll be a problem. But either way, this is the technique that I used. So um, for the legs, I take one pipe cleaner and this so far used uh, five pipe cleaners just in this okay so it uses up a lot of pipe cleaners so I took and you know bent folded it once folded it twice and basically for the legs then you just twirl all right and again I'm gonna have to put more more pipe cleaners to this to increase the girth and sometimes what I like to do with this technique is I burn because you're gonna lose a lot of that uh, girth and then see if I you know how many more pipe cleaners I need to add to it to bring it to a nice um, sort of thick leg here okay and these are not that thick really if you think about it right it's still a bit on the skeletal side so and I like that for tree creatures I don't know I okay so just kind of roughly and there's really not, I'm not worried about anatomical position, position, precision for this. I'm just kind of, I'm making a creature, okay, with a vague resemblance to a rhino. So I add my leg in this one. I may have to um, cut a little bit later, but basically that's the idea, okay. Uh, but really it doesn't, I'm not going to apply it. <clears throat> that intensely that the uh, cocktail sticks actually start burning, you know, and that's key also. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm learning this technique as I go along. I've never done this before. This is the first time. So I may leave some little, little projections, right? But actually here, here I added a kind of loose, pipe cleaner so it looks like maybe a vine or something but notice how basically it's going to look like a freaking geopet <laughs> like one of those geopets it's going to look really weird at first and fuzzy and you're going to be like what the hell but then once you apply the flame and you start to melt all this stuff then things start to really uh come out all right so let's just now, once I'm ready, I take my cutters and I really cut these, okay? One of the cool things about this technique is that as the pipe cleaners melt, they will kind of like attach to each other and like almost like cement each other, you know? So just do be careful when you do add heat, okay? Now, for some areas, what I did... And again, this is not a step-by-step -step process. I'm just talking a little bit, giving a basic idea of what I'm doing. But then I start like areas like for the head that are very tricky. Okay, notice how on one end I make this kind of branchy thing, right? And just attach it there to make the lips and start building up the lips. And so in some cases I go vertically and then other cases I go horizontally and that will add a lot of 
texturing and the diversity and stuff. And if I don't like the way, let's say, this stick looks once the figure is, is done, I just cut it, you know? So let's just give it a little bit of flame very carefully. And again, please, disclaimer, uh, I hope that we're all adults here, no kids watching. Uh, do be careful and use, you know, your common sense and, you know, if it doesn't feel safe to you, don't do it. Whatever you do, just be safe. You know, don't burn yourself or burn the house down, you know, uh, definitely. We don't want that. So you notice how much already that leg, as everything melts, how much that leg really um, starts to like thin out. So if you want it thicker, you're going to have to really uh, work on it, you know. And, and again, in some areas, like I'm actually applying a lot of flame to this, but in some areas, you just want to, and this thing is dying actually, I'm going to have to buy a new one. Okay, so the flame is dying out on me. I'll have to buy a new one. But in some areas, I go really tight. And then in other areas, I'm just like passing it through. So um, here you see how it really melts. The Okay, you can kind of see that. Now, this thing is dying out. I'm going to purchase a new one. But that was just a very rough representation of what I did. And... With the proper flame, everything begins to really retract and it kind of glues on there to the tin foil. Okay, notice how the toothpicks didn't really burn. So, um, yeah, it's a very interesting technique. And then once you're done, once I have all the shapes I want, then I can start painting. Now, for this one, I use little pebbles for the feet here to give them a little detail. And I threw in a couple of pebbles here and there because this is this is an earthy, earthy creature, right? So you could definitely throw like little texture paste in between there. There's a bit that I have to paint. Okay, so I'm going to be experimenting with various kinds of creature forms uh, using this technique. All right. All right, so I want to show some of the other... Uh, kind of twirls and bends and things that I do. Um, here is the horn. I'm going to give it a little length and just kind of do this. Okay, chop it off there. But notice the head is very tricky. Now, in many areas, I will, um, areas where two pipe cleaners meet, I will twirl them. And connect them and that helps to start to hold everything. So now we have this Chia Pet that we are going to start to burn again. And the the flame's working okay right now. But this thing's about to die. So I don't know how far I'm going to get. But you guys saw the uh, finished product. So you get an idea. Okay, so just want to make sure that everything is burning up. No fuzzies. Don't want any fuzzies left. And areas that, for example, where the wire is really exposed, I just use flocking powder in those areas. Like if it looks too exposed and you see the braiding of the wire, this thing has braided wire inside of it. Uh, could just put like glue, white glue, and then... Um, put some flocking powder on it. Now I'm going to start going this way now with the pipe cleaners and that really helps to give it um, some variety. All right, looks like my flame died. So this is pretty much what I could do for now. Um, but eventually when we apply enough heat, we get it to look like some kind of really odd tree monster. Okay. And this one has a howdah that is removable. Julie loves that word. So there it is. Uh, it's a very interesting technique uh, when applied to other things. Uh, remember, this technique is used to make trees. 
you can make some really cool looking trees with these uh, fuzzy sticks. Um, but I'm taking it in a different direction. I'm trying to make other things with it as well. And there's quite a few things that uh, I think this technique can be used for. Now for the creature, for the rhino, I managed to burn off a little bit more. Um, this thing is pretty much out of fuel. So I'll have to get another one and finish it off. Basically now uh, I do all my vertical pipe cleaners kind of wrap the, the armature, the tinfoil armature, and then uh, do some horizontal ones as well. So, and, and maybe have a couple that go at an angle, right? So all of this creates like a mosaic. And when you uh, burn it all down, then you get all these weird like lumpy areas and really textured areas. So, uh, and of course, uh, in areas where two pipe cleaners meet, I generally um, twirl them up and then I have all these little branchy things coming out, right? And uh, it really looks, it looks like a construct, some kind of earth construct, right? So we're going to explore that more and more as time goes on. And I'm really happy with these, with these earth creatures. And Julie's going to be... Uh, using these in her armies. This is for an army list that she'll be creating, which I'll probably let her talk to you guys about. But we are looking at a sort of fey, you know, army, like a fairy army with all these weird, uh, dark, you know, uh, creatures that mimic nature. So I'll be doing more of this. And once I finish this elk, uh, then I'll show it. I'll have the tree man writer on there. And then there's another a tree man hero or something that I'm making with this armature. So we'll we'll talk about the wire armatures in another video. And of course there will be more things, not just tree creatures. I'm going to apply it to a lot of different things and see where it works, right? Some areas it may not work. The technique may not work as well. But in other areas I think it's going to work. It's a pretty interesting technique. So all right, folks. Well, that's all I wanted to say on this. And I hope you guys are having a great weekend. And we will have that Grim Dark game up as soon as we can. Okay, it's going to be an interesting game, I think. And uh, in my next uh, miniature spotlight, I'm going to talk about uh, where some of the miniatures that I mentioned in the previous video, what armies and army lists and things like that, you know, what those miniatures will pertain to. So I think I want to focus a little bit on that. Our talking army list is actually very cool. So, uh, all right, folks, we'll talk very soon and we'll see you in the next video.